there are some concerns about voter turnout in Ohio. So the Cincinnati NAACP is working to get more people to the polls. They're promoting a voter empowerment program. Joining us now is the chapter third vice president, David Whitehead. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. So unfortunately, um, Hamilton County, specifically their board of elections earlier this week after super or excuse me, after Tuesday's primary election, they said we had the lowest voter turnout um, within recent years. I believe Hamilton County was the lowest in the entire state, uh, a little over 14 percent. Why do you think that's happening? Why aren't more people headed to the polls? Well, well, there, there are a couple of different reasons. Uh, and we were under 15 percent, so it was 14 point, point something. But mm -hmm. uh, it's still we have a lot of people that have decided it doesn't matter. And that's part of a big problem of what's going on in the county and the reason why we need to be out there engaged with them. Why do you think people feel like it doesn't matter? Because it does. Every election matters. Every voting opportunity matters. But there's a lack of education. There's a lack of people knowing why they should be voting for certain positions. And then you have the fact that we in Ohio have a part a primary that is an open primary. So you go select which. Right. Which ballot, ballot you want, you want mm -hmm. when you get to the elections. Well, that means you've got to make a choice about whether or not it's going to be a Republican or a Democrat that you want to vote for. Maybe you want to vote for somebody on both sides of the, of the ticket. Right. So you don't have that option in Ohio. Okay. You know, where there's other states that have the top two voters mm -hmm. go on to the general. Okay. And it's more of a combined piece. So there's a lot of independent voters now. Okay, the NAACP uh, here in Cincinnati, you all just launched a, a mobile voter bus. Uh, we covered that a, a couple of months ago, that initiative. Mm -hmm. You all kind of get people registered to vote. What else can they find there? So, so what's great about the mobile unit uh, is it, there's six computer units on there, and we can actually take you on to your journey and help you start your voting plan. And the first plan is to find out whether or not you're registered. Okay. or if you uh, need to change your address, or where your precinct is. Mm -hmm. And then as we get with their, our solid ballots, their candidates that are gonna be on the ballot, we have the opportunity to show you actually what your ballot would look like. That way you can go and do the research on the candidates that you would select. You're not going in there surprised. I think a lot of what happened in this primary, there was a lot of surprises, mm -hmm. because people didn't know who was mm -hmm. on the ballot, yeah. what their ballot was gonna look like, and you know, it is our goal to get out there into the community and make sure we're educating people so that they can be informed voters. Uh, really quickly, we're almost out of time. What can organizations, um, governments, even us as journalists, what can we do to inspire people to really participate in this process? Probably the biggest thing is, is to inform them that everything that happens from an election standpoint affects them. Every position has some way in which they affect your life. They touch your life. And once people start understanding that even a, when you're voting for a judge, mm -hmm. that judge controls budgets. That judge makes decisions, you know, in regards to whether or not something is legal. Mm -hmm. That affects you. So you should be voting for judges. You should understand what the judge thought process is before they get into office. Yeah. It sets precedent in our community. It definitely sets precedence. Thank you so much for coming. Well, we really you. appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thanks. We'll be back after the break. Stick around.